On today's episode of The Joy of Editing, we're looking at the cross-balance filter. Now, what is the cross-balance filter? You're going to find out today. You'll find it in Nick Color Effects, part of the Nick Collection. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Cully. Today, it is the cross-balance filter. This filter is really overlooked, in my opinion. It's very simple and easy to use. I have four different examples for you today. I have this image, this one, this one, and this one. We're going to see how this cross-balance filter works to help each one of these images out. And I think you're going to really like it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. But first, let's consult Color Effects Pro's user's guide for this particular cross-balance filter. This filter simulates the use of a daylight film under artificial tungsten type light or a tungsten color film in daylight. Use this filter to warm up your photos with an orange color or cool them down with a bluish effect. So basically with this filter, we can use it to either warm up the image or cool down the image depending on which way we feel it needs to go. And this filter does a beautiful job as you'll see here shortly. This is such an easy filter to use. It basically has a method section, which select one of six available options to get a daylight to tungsten or tungsten to daylight effect. Each option gives a more accentuated effect than the previous one. And then we have a filter strength, adjust the degree to which the filter is applied to the photo. And that's it. There's not even shadow or highlight protection, but let me show you how easy this filter is to use, but how effective it is. I think you're going to like it. Let's get into it. Well, let's launch Color Effects Pro. I'm going to come up here to File in Photoshop and come down to Automate, and you'll find the Selective Tool, the Nick Selective Tool, right here. Click on that, and it opens up the Nick Selective Tool. Now, you'll find Color Effects inside of here, and you'll notice under Filters, I have a bunch of different filters listed here. Anytime you favorite a filter inside of Nick Color Effects, it will show up in this list here under filters. And I have favorited the cross balance filter and it's right here. So we'll click on that and we'll open up color effects. And here we are in color effects pro and you'll notice the cross balance filter is open. See the little orange line right here that denotes that this filter is opened and it defaults to this daylight to tungsten number two. Now, if you'll recall from the user guide, remember there's three warming filters and three cooling filters. Now this drop down, if we click it, and I said it defaults to this number two, but you'll notice we have daylight to tungsten one, this first group of three are the warming filters. So let's hover over one. You see it's warming the image, but it's not super strong. Here's number two, the default setting. It's a little bit stronger. Now here's number three. It's a lot stronger. And I really like the way this one looks. And then the second group is tungsten to daylight. There's three filters there. So these are the cooling ones. Let's try tungsten to daylight one. See how the image gets cool. And now it'll get a little bit stronger when I go to the second one. And it'll get a lot stronger when I go to the third one. So the second group here is cooling filters and the first group is warming filters. Let's pick a filter we like. Let's go to one. I like the warming on this image. There's one. And remember, they get a little stronger. Here's two. You can see it's a little stronger. And here's three. I actually like three the best. So let's click on three. So we're going to warm this image up with this daylight to tungsten number three. And then the only other thing we have is a strength slider. We also have an overall opacity slider as well. but I don't really use this. I'll just leave this at 100%. But the strength here, we can get more of an effect if we move this to the right. So let's take it the whole way over to 100%. And that looks pretty good, but it's probably too strong. And then we can back it off by dragging the slider to the left a little bit. And I think I like it right around here at 79%. Here's the before and here's the after. So you could just click right here on this checkbox to see the before or after. Or you could left click with your mouse and hold down here and see the before or after. Or you could use the uh, split screen here and drag this across to see the before and after. So there's different ways. Or you could view like the before on the top, the after on the bottom, or you could click right here and go with a left to right before and after view. But I like to keep it on this guy right here and either just left click on here before and after or just click on the checkbox over here. But I think that looks nice. I like this image 
with the warmth on it. But that's how easy it is to use. It's a very simple filter to use, but these warming and cooling tones can really help images out. And I have three more examples for you. But I'm happy with this, so let's go ahead and click Apply, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. Here's the before, and here's the after. And don't forget, you always have an opacity that you can pull back if you felt you went too strong on the effect. Well, that was really easy, but look at this really nice result. Again, we went from here to here with that filter. Pretty nice. Now let's try another image, this guy right here. Let's see what kind of a look we can get. I'll come back over to the Nick Selective tool and click on Cross Balance, and we'll open up Color Effects Pro 5 and see what we get. Now remember, it always defaults to Daylight to Tungsten 2, and that's the mid-strength of the warm filters. So let's try the first one. Here's number one. That looks nice. Here's number two. A stronger effect, but it's really beautiful. I tend to go for the warmer looks for most images to be honest with you. And here's number three. That's nice too, but that's a little bit more artistic looking, depending if you were going for that type of an effect, that could be nice. But it's a little too strong, but let's try the tungsten to daylights, the cooling. Here's the first one. See, I don't like that cooling effect so much here. Here's the second one, it'll be stronger. No, I don't like it, and here's the third one. Okay, it takes it to a more like, kind of greenish, bluish tone which is kind of nice. Let's try this one. Let's click on here. I don't think I'm going to like it, but let's take the strength. Let's take it off. And it's always good to experiment. So let's start to move it to the right a little bit. And, you know, maybe somewhere right in there may not look too bad if I was going for a more artistic look to this image. But I think I would stick with the warming filter. So let's go back up. Let me go ahead and double click this and set it back to the default setting of 70. Let's go back up and let's try Daylight to Tungsten 1. Let's find one we like. Here's one. I do like that. Here is number two. I like it. It's a little stronger. And here is number three. I think three is too strong. I think I would go with number one. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. And I do like it, but I may just pull it back a little wee bit. I just like this image with that little bit of nice warmth in it. Take a look. Here's the before and the after, just a nice subtle warming, but I think it really works well. I really like what it's doing to these grasses here. I believe this image was shot in Iceland. These are all just stock images, by the way, but I like it. I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. And now we're back in Photoshop, let's take a look. Here's the before, and now the after. I like it, I think it adds a nice warm tone to this image. Let's try another one. Let's see what this next image is. Oh yes, some mountains here. Hey, you know what? Maybe a cooling filter on here would look great or warming. Let's see. All I need to do is click cross balance on the Nick Selective tool and we'll open up the cross balance filter. Here we are with a default daylight to tungsten, which is a warming filter. Remember, that's the second in the group, so it's a little stronger than the first. Let me hover over the first one. Now, nah, I don't like the first one. Again, the second one and the third one, that is really strong. But that's artistic looking, and I do kind of like that. Let me click on this one and pull back on the strength. That third one is always going to give you a little more of an artistic look. And maybe a little more, maybe somewhere right around there. You know, I think we need to overemphasize the warm to get that real artistic look in this image. Okay, so that one, we could bear that one in mind if we want to go more artistic. Let me go ahead and double click right here, and that'll set us back to 70%. Now let's try the cooling filters, because I think the cooling filters may look cool. Yeah, they will look cool, won't they? Because they're cooling filters, Dave, but let's see. Here we go, here's the first one, tungsten to daylight, number one, and I do like it. Here's number two. I like it, but it's a little too strong, and here's number three. This one always gives you that little bit more bluish, greenish tone, which can be, again, more artistic, really. And it's okay, but I think I like number two right here. So let's click on this one. But I think it's a little too strong. So I'm going to take the strength. Let's pull it back to maybe right about, I don't know, maybe right about here. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. That cooling, I think, looks really beautiful on this image. And that's it. I'm sold on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And here we are back in Photoshop. Here is the before, 
and the after, and I think that really helps. And remember, you always have the opacity. If you felt you went too strong, you could pull it back. But I like this at 100%. Now, I have one more for you, this one here, and this is a portrait. Let's see what it can do on a portrait. Let's launch Color Effects Pro 5 by clicking on Cross Balance, and we'll open up to the Cross Balance filter. And we're at Daylight to Tungsten, the default setting. It's the second one of the warming filters. Let's try it. That's too strong, I think. Let's try the first one, Daylight to Tungsten 1. Ooh, I do like that. And again, here's two, and now here is three. Again, that more overdone, but this can be very artistic, but you really got to probably pull the strength back on this one. But I don't like it. Let's try the cooling filters. Here's one. Here's two. Don't like the cooling filters as much, especially on face. And here's three. Again, a more artistic look. Let's try this one and pull the strength the whole way off and build it up slow. See if we can get more of an artistic look to the image. And you know what? We kind of can. It doesn't look too bad like right here. But again, not a big fan. Remember, if you double click on strength, it will go back to the default setting of 70. I do like the warming filter, so let's click right here in the drop down. Let's go to one. This is the one I like. So I'm going to click on daylight to tungsten number one, but I think it's a little too strong. So I'm going to take the strength and pull it back a little bit to maybe right about here. Let's check it out. Here's the before and here's the after. I just like that little extra warmth. I think it makes her complexion look really beautiful. And I also like what it's doing to the foliage in the background here. Let's just bring it up to about 46% before and after. I like it. I think it looks really pretty. I'm going to go ahead and click apply, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. Again, here's the before and the after. And remember, you always have your opacity that you can pull back. But that is the cross balance filter. So if you need to warm up an image, it's a good one. If you need to cool down an image, it's a good one. If you want to get a little more artistic, it works for that kind of stuff too. Well, there it is, everyone. That was the cross balance filter. Give this one a try. It's a very simple and easy filter to use, but it is super effective, especially when you either want to cool something down or warm something up, and it does it in a very photographic way. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.